All right, so we're gonna do this, the the burst stain on the top here, and I went back and looked at the uh, at the color gradient that I wanted to do. Come to find out that you know, they actually make this now. Um, you know, to the tune of 750 bucks, but they make it, so go figure. Um, all right, anyhow, so what I'm doing to uh, to do this is I'm actually using a dye, okay? Um, and this is a dye, a pigment that's kind of designed for epoxy resins, um, but it was uh, relatively inexpensive. I mean, I got the whole, you know, what is this, 15 colors for, you know, um, I think it was like 12 or 15 bucks or something on Amazon, it wasn't a whole lot. But um, it's an alcohol-based dye, so I'm actually gonna mix it into um, denatured alcohol, which this is probably older than me. This came from, uh, what the fuck? Well, it's still going. I don't know. The camera was acting weird there. Anyway, yeah, so I'm going to mix the dyes in with this denatured alcohol. Um, this is old. This came from a box of stuff from my parents. I mean, it's, it's from Heckinger's. That's, I believe it was $4.29. Wouldn't be that now. All right, so I'm going to try on a piece on a test piece here. This is poplar. It's not maple, but um, it's the only thing I have that's light colored that's a hardwood. So we're going to, uh, we're going to see how this is going to work. I'm just going to get these cut open here real quick. They just got like a little dripper sort of tip on them. Um, actually, before I go any further, because I already I got this all over me already. Let's see, I'm actually wearing gloves, because I don't want to look like I was shaking hands with Papa Smurf. Or making blueberry pie or something. Because this is, I don't want to get this everywhere. I have a, an assumption that since it's a dye, it's going to literally dye anything it touches. Um, okay, stop touching it. All right, so we'll just start with like I got two different blues here because I want one to be lighter than the other one. You know what? Let's be conservative about it now. What am I going to start with? <sighs> when in doubt, reach for a screwdriver. All right, so it actually is being absorbed in there, which is good. Um, kind of nervous if it was going to actually do it or not, actually mix with the solvent, but it looks like it is. Okay, so we want a really light one, and then I want a darker one, and I could probably, what did I do, two drops? I could probably just mix a little bit more of one than the other, but I think that might give me a more direct result if I just mix them. I don't know how well you can see that. Oh, you can't see it. You know, two different blues, and I'm wearing blue and wearing blue gloves, so it's kind of a blue day. It's all good. Um, I'm blue, I'm let's see how this is gonna sort of work out. I gotta make sure I keep everything sort of separate here, left and right. Um, so I don't wanna um, cross these up. Let's see here. Okay, so that's doing nothing. So we're definitely going to need some more of the pigment. I'm just going to do these evenly so that I can uh, kind of keep track of how much of each color I'm putting into it so that they get... I don't necessarily want them the same... Uh, I know they're not going to be the same shade because they're different colors obviously, but this way it's the same amount of uh, pigment saturation to uh, versus the material, and that still is doing nothing. Now, this might not be uh, this might not be the way to do it. I don't know how this is going to work. 
Hmm. It's definitely getting onto the rag there. Hmm. Just a very little bit. I wonder if this blue is going to work any better. Well, that one at least comes out blue ish. I'm going to need a lot more of this pigment, I think. Kind of, sort of blue. Yeah, that's actually more what I'm looking for for the lighter blue. I don't know how well that's showing up. Again, this could all look totally different when I go to do it on the maple, but I don't know. I kind of see it. Um, all right, I'm going to mess with this a little bit. I'll bring you guys back once I get something that kind of, sort of works. All right, so I got something I think is going to kind of work. And what we're going to do is I'm going to just go over the whole thing with the light color um, just to kind of give it a base and we'll see how that goes. So here goes nothing. And it's looking like it's showing up as nothing on the maple except for some of the little grain pockets. Hmm. Anything this will help to start to saturate the surface a little bit. Yeah, but so far that's doing pretty much nothing. It's getting just some of the grain with a little bit of the blue. Let's try a little bit more dye. Just go with a lot. There we go. That's the faintest bit of blue there. Now we're going to try it with the, the darker shade, see how that does. Seems to be a little bit more. That's a little bit more what we want. I might just put this on all of it and see how it does. I think that is what I'm going to do.
as it's soaking in, it's starting to bring out a little bit of the grain there. I mean, I knew these weren't the prettiest pieces to begin with, but that's okay. Might let that ride there for the uh, for the light color. So I'm going to let that sit and dry for a couple minutes, see how that goes, and then uh, I'll try to get something a little bit darker to bring out there. But we're going to hold there for the uh, for the light color. All right, so we're back again. Cool part about using these dyes is they dry really fast. I mean, like within some couple minutes, they're pretty dry. So now I'm just going to come around the outside, probably two thirds of this here, with another coat. I actually added, uh, I tried it on a test piece and it came out okay. I added a little bit of purple, and I think that's going to help darken it up a little bit. Yeah, it definitely, definitely toned it up a little bit more. Alright, I'm going to try a little bit more. definitely taking on a little bit more of a blue tint as it's soaking in here.
now it's starting to really look like something. Let that dry for a minute or two, see how that turns out. All right, so as it's drying, definitely getting some splotches. And uh, I don't really know what's causing that. So like I said, I've never done this before. But I think what we're gonna keep doing is just trying to keep this out, this uh, the same sort of thing going. Because it kind of had a point there where it just went from like nothing to here you go. So we're going to see if we can kind of make it do that a little bit again. And one thing I did do was actually mixed a little bit of this like uh, brightish green uh, in with the light blue. And I've been kind of putting some of that in the middle here. Mainly just to use it to kind of, the way I'm figuring this is to keep it all wet is going to start to blend it a little bit, I think. this I'm talking myself into this as I'm doing this, so. Um, I'm figuring if I can get something that's lighter in there, that's going to help try to keep that center part um, a little bit of a lighter shade. Well, if I could just get that part there to just tone up there, you know. It's like taking it to the gym. You just wanted to get a get a tone to it, you know. I I mean I don't know if I'm the one to give you that advice because I can count on, you know, one of my coworkers' hands who's uh, <laughs> missing a couple. Uh, how many times I've been to a gym? Um, not really my thing. That whole, you know, structured physical activity. I'd rather go get something done outside. Then the real question is going to be, what's this going to look like with lacquer on it? Um, I'm curious to see how that's going to sort of bring it out, you know, bring it, bring it to, bring it up a little bit, see how it's going to go. So, um, I think what I'm going to do next, I'm going to do one more little round of this while I got a good bit in my my cup here. I'm going to do one more coating of both colors and get the whole thing wet again. This side over here is turning out real good, I think. Unfortunately, most of that's going to be covered by the by the pick guard, which if I wouldn't have hacked up this hole so bad, I might just leave the pick guard off, but that's just not going to cut it. Um, so we're going to try that there. And then you get the middle here, you know, bring it back in the pool, get it wet again. And let it kind of blend as it does. You can see how it starts to push the push the pigment back a little bit. It's actually pretty cool. Um, you just kind of come back with the other ones and that. All right, so stop talking, Brett. Leave it alone. And I'm going to bring it back and I'm going to set the hardware on there when it's dry and really see how this has come around. Well, there we go with the hardware on it. And what I did is uh, I just kept going till I ran out of my colors. Um, you know, you can see I wound up having to really saturate that uh, that solvent with a lot of, a lot of pigment, a lot of dye 
And you can see what I wound up with with the other one. It's like a yellowish, greenish, bluish, you know, actually kind of a really neat color. And that's kind of what we did in the middle there, and that just kind of helped flow this stuff out there. And um, I'd be lying to you if I told you I knew what I was doing with this. Um, I have used some wood dyes before, but they've always been like the Balin Solar Lux or, uh, or things like that. And usually, with the exception of maybe a little bit of like a uh, little bit of blue and green somewhere, um, they've always been like wood tones. So uh, this was kind of an experience here, but I really wanted to do the whole burst thing and see how that was going to work. And I mean, I guess if it doesn't or if it didn't, I could always sand it off or, um, you know, just paint it. But you know, uh, you'll want to do that unless you have to. I mean, you can see it's still it's still drying out a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it alone. And as I pick up another rag, no, leave it alone. I'm going to let it be um, without all the stuff on it, and just see see how it dries down overnight and what it looks like. And then uh, if I need to, maybe I can come back over top of it with just a little bit of that. Uh, that solvent and blend it back in if I need to um, but I think the only place I might need to do that might be right here so maybe we'll just try to do that just a little bit right here so yeah you can see you can you can sort of get it to come around a little bit and sort of blend it in just by taking some straight solvent there some straight rubbing alcohol and sort of blending it back and that takes some of that uh, that real dark color that was in there and I think some of that's coming from a little bit of the uh, little bit of the purple or the the darker colors that I put into that to really get that blue to just to get on there put a little more there just kind of rub it in I think we're just gonna let it there see what it comes back to and uh, the real test will be to see how much of it comes back up whenever we do the uh, um, the clear coat on it. So the inspector came out. The artist had to had to check, see how progress was. See, it's getting the monster stare down. I like the gradient. Oh, I'm bringing out the art words. Definite gradient. Yes. That's an art word? It's not just like a human word? Gradient? It's more words than I am. Okay. I like that you did a, a sunburst type pattern, lighter in the center, and then it gets darker as it goes out, and then it fades into the black. Good work.